Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to take a look at displaying which specific user did the changes or created it or added the specific trick to the platform. So something like an audit trail, but a little bit more relaxed, right? So we got some stuff to fix. We got some stuff to implement specifically. First thing is the relationship. So let's say we have trick number one, we have trick number two. If trick number two is migrated to a newer version, what we're going to have is these relationships from trick number one to the first uh, from trick number two to the uh, like the first version of trick number two to the first trick here and the second version right so what we want to do is go from the old version uh, sorry from the old relationship to the new relationship right that points to the second version because otherwise we will need to be getting every old thing old versions on the first load and then I mean, that's just going to be crazy, right? We don't want to be doing crazy stuff. Uh, let's go into the models and hopefully you will understand what I mean. If you don't, if you are just confused, I'm like, what is this guy talking about, right? Uh, let's go ahead and set a Boolean flag on here. And we're going to say that this should be active. Whenever we migrate, migrate the relationship. It's like a railway switch. It goes and that's it, right? So this is going to prompt a couple of changes first thing into the program just so you understand what this looks like where we have the trick with the relationship let's go ahead and we just make sure that we set it to active so what we will do is our controller will only return uh, tricks with active relationships okay uh, for this uh, once we've set this let's go ahead into our controller into our tricks controller and what we will do, have to do is we'll have to edit this part right so this gets all of our active tricks. It should only get our active relationships as well. The thing that will uh, be happening uh, somewhere here in the create, you can see that we're not actually setting any prerequisites or progressions here. So we want to make sure that our, um, what's it called, the uh, relationships are set up here. So for that, let's actually just grab this stuff from here. Uh, let me just uh, drop this down here. I will copy all of this stuff from when we update i'm just gonna put it here because i don't know i want this stuff to exist there so uh just delete that language i mean it was pretty much the same so just making sure that from the form we're setting the prerequisites and progressions good um how do we actually extract them from here right so let's go ahead and see this so in the projections uh, where we have all of this stuff what we what we really want to do is we want to do something like where active well, because it's an expression and because we are in the entity framework world, we kind of have to abide by its rules. You have to put as queryable and don't forget to add to list on here. Uh, and now what you will have to do is you will have to do it for the other properties as well. Okay, so I mean, uh, it, could, it could be worse, but this is a, quite a neat solution still. So on here, same thing as queryable, we're active we're still getting these progressions and we want them active and uh, we are to listing them at the end right so we're as if like we're executing the query and that's all there is to it right uh, just when we get this let's just not forget to include uh, the trick categories i don't think we might, we, let, let's just whoa what's all this get out of there uh, let's just not forget to inclu include progressions once what if there are as i always say Right, if there are performance problems with anything, I mean, we'll we'll take care of it, right? Uh, we can also say something like, as no tracking. That's just going to make everything like 10 times easier for Entity Framework. There it is. This should grab only the active relationships. Um, we just have to make sure that we set these active relationships. Uh, let's get our migration context. I already had it typed out there. So here... Uh, kind of how we get the source uh, I want to do the same thing when we migrate this so it's going to be per entity and uh, these may start looking like um, you know uh, like they should be behind an interface or something like that and that's probably because they should be but for now let's go ahead and make this me method a, a migrate a relationships right so migrate migrate Great relationships yeah so we're going to be migrating relationships for a specific type 
Uh, one thing that I'm just going to need to add here are int current. So we're not going to be doing it the same way because different uh, entities might have different relationships, multiple relationships that need to be migrated. Uh, it's going to come down to a specific entity and that's why I think it could probably use its own class to do both of these operations. But for now, uh, we might do that cleanup later. So uh, just take care that we're not going to be returning anything here. Uh, so this uh, will need an else block so we don't throw at the end of this. All right. And otherwise perform our migration here. And uh, let's not forget the thing that we are actually migrating to. So because for the newer records, uh, when we create the record, uh, we don't want the relationships to be active until it's approved. So the, uh, this is still valid for creation, not just updates. Uh, we want to check if the current one is more than zero, right? Or we can pass a nullable, but I think uh, checking it more than zero is a little bit better. So if it's more than zero, then we actually want to do an operation that looks something like looking at trick categories and then grabbing all the trick categories where you are either the prerequisites or you are a progression. Okay, uh, hopefully that makes sense that you like you're looking for the foreign keys so it, it basically trick relationship is a composite table right it's a both of the keys that it's a composite from our foreign keys you're either going to be one or the other so that's why we check it like that and i mean this is super simple super simple we just take the entity we take the active and we set it to false Nothing hard about it, right? We de deactivate the current one and we want to make the next one active. So uh, that's what we do. We take the target, the thing that we're going to, and we just say, right, find all the other, all the next relationships and migrate to them. The real thing not to forget is to actually call this function. So we're just going to call it here. Uh, let's get our, all of our stuff from the mod items. And again, this could, I think this could be a lot better, right? So we got the type, that's how we figure out what to run and make sure that if we don't have one of these matches, that's when we throw otherwise, because we have a void, we can't just return and have it like here. Be, be, be careful with that. So format the file, cool. I think more or less that's done. Uh, if some, if, again, if any error, I, I say this every single time. If there are any errors, we'll take care of it, man. Anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the UI, like, right? So in the UI, if we go ahead and try to create a trick, uh, data is going to be missing. That's because when we are implementing the list and the dictionaries, a, a bunch of stuff broke, right? So what we want to do is for all of these, we want to set them to come from the lists that we have, right? The implement the migration to dictionary hasn't been too hard. We want to grab these from lists and it's going to be coming from the state. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the map getters and map mutations. Just unneeded imports and we have the list, right? So for the difficulty that we uh, can select, we can select all of the difficulties and remember that Vutify expects a specific thing for us to pass to it. So let me just drop this on the new line and this could probably be a function, but uh, we are going to map it to a, a new object, right? Uh, just like that. Oh, there we go. And uh, the new object will be something like um, the first thing, sorry, that we will need is value x id. So the id of the difficulty is the slug and the, you know, the, yeah. And then the name. Okay. So text, uh, we're setting the text and the name of the entity. All right. So this is just a map. And again, this could be different for all of these. It probably won't be. Let's just go ahead and set it. The model, I'm just going to drop it to new line. So it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, hopefully you're not going insane there. Like what the hell are you adding all over the place? Right. So hopefully this is a little bit easier to see. Uh, for most of these, uh, for prerequisites, these are going to be tricks. These are going to be tricks. Uh, these are going to be categories. 
Uh, these could be a little bit tough to control, but what we're going to do is we are going to uh, try to filter it based on the ID here because we don't want to allow select a prerequisite or a progression that we uh, already basically have as a trick that we're editing or adding, right? So let's do filter X and uh, yeah, just kind of remember how to write the arrows. If we don't have the ID on the form, right? It's a true statement or we can be a little bit more um, precise. It's going to be either null or undefined. Uh, the next thing that we can say is if it's not undefined, we need to say that the ID of the form, make sure that we are losing my cursor, doesn't equal the ID. And for the stuff that we're editing, I think I'm just missing one more equals there. Yeah, make JavaScript happy. And just put this here as well, right? So this should just make sure that when we're creating or when we're editing, uh, we are not selecting duplicates, but for duplicates, it shouldn't matter. And I think I've uh, just messed this up. I think not here. So we want to filter only if we have the ID and when the ID is equals. So this should be equals. Okay. Sorry about that. Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, hopefully I just didn't mess this whole thing up. So uh, uh, let's give this a refresh. Let's go into backflip and this should be apparent here. For the prerequisite, you can see we only have the backflip here. So it only shows us the thing that we have. So it's not filtering out the items that match this. It's uh, filtering out everything else, right? So uh, um, maybe we can just do something like this. Come back to here. Maybe I, I don't need to specify the, what's it called, the undefined. Maybe that will just work. If it does, perfect. So backwards roll, backwards roll, and forwards roll. So another thing to do is if basically, if something is in is selected as a prerequisite, don't show it in progressions. Uh, it's not the point of today's video. Today is putting users on specific things. We can now iron out that later and that will be like a five minute thing and will be part of a, a cleanup job, right? But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and say edited. We want to say forwards roll on here, say next and save, right? So then when we go to the moderation, let's go into the four here and we'll approve this a couple of times. Cool. That's approved. Uh, let me just hard refresh this. And what should happen is when I go in the backwards roll, if you've done this correctly, going on the backflip, this will actually navigate you and you're not going to get any errors, right? So. Uh, the versioning is correct here and you can see the forwards role now uh, gets that new um, active uh, relationship. Now, uh, let's quickly go here and again, we're going to just start with a fresh slate. What we're going to do is we are going to add users to our version models. Okay. So again, going into the models, uh, we are going to go into the abstractions, a version model. And on here, let's go ahead and add a prop. Uh, let's uh, make sure that this is a user ID, right? We can copy this, make sure that we that a user. And now all of our versioned models can have a user behind them, right? So it's the user that edits, ed, edits, edits the record. Uh, for this, we will need to go into the API controllers, a tricks controller. And you can see how we have this API controller here, but we have actually created an inheritance and everything that's going to slowly start using this uh, should actually start using that API controller. So let's just put the API controller here. What do we have? We just had the API controller. Let's remove that thing. Uh, this uh, now gives us access to user ID, username, and getting specific claims and whatnot. The real thing that we want is actually setting the user. So when we create user ID equals user ID, right? Super simple. Uh, the same thing is going to happen here when we edit the user changes, but just remember that it's a new record. So we still know who originally created it. And um, this, well, this, this just, you know, sets the user as a new one. Now, uh, b because it sets the user, we actually want to authorize it. So let's just make sure that we go ahead and 
say authorize on create and update. The delete one, uh, I mean, it's kind of wonky right now. You know, we might not need it. We might need it. You never know, right? It might be a moderation item, right? Um, for the authorization, I can't remember. I think we were doing specific uh, policies. If I can remember, did we? Uh, let me. Uh, we had the constant somewhere here, right? Only the user policies should be, and moderation is a user, so. So for authorize, let's go ahead, make sure that we set the policy and the tricking library constants, policies, user, right? Uh, grab this policy, make sure that we set it here. Sweet. So only the user can access these two endpoints. Now, uh, what we want to do is when we go and display the trick, we want to be able to include the user as well, okay? Now let's go ahead and on our all, when we get all of our tricks, we're gonna add another thing and we're just gonna make sure that we're gonna grab our users, right? So when we grab all of these projections or all of these things, and again, if we, if we need to split up the projection between multiple things, we can do so. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at the user and actually want to select this into a new user. And the way that we're gonna do this is going to be slightly different because here we have as queryables, where and stuff like that. So uh, we might need to do something along the lines of uh, uh, this. So not ID, but rather username and then the image. Uh, so uh, this will be all right. What we want to do is we want to kind of uh, stick that in a uh, user model and we want to reuse that. So let's go into the view models. We are going to uh, copy the trick of view models and uh, we are going to set these to user view models. So let's just go ahead and make sure that we put our user here. All of this stuff in here will be removed and uh, let's just make sure that we rename the class. Don't think I needed to rename it in many places, but uh, let me just make sure where is this being used. Okay, in this function. Okay, so that's fine. So, uh, user model, user view model. Um, I mean, what what could be different, right? So let's go ahead and rename this to user. Uh, let's go ahead and just grab this. I will name this to flat uh, because this uh, user view model does not include the submissions or anything like that. We are not including the submissions here. Uh, we are just displaying the username and uh, the image of the user. Uh, for that reason, we're going to call this create flat as well. And one thing that we will actually want to do is create a function that's uh, actually a function and not kind of a reference to an object. Okay, so uh, what this, this is going to look something like this. So could be passing a user here and uh, just basically changing it up a little bit like this. And this is just so we can use this as a projection. If you're wondering why we're doing this, this is just a way to, you can put invoke here. I don't know if I've uh, explained this in these series somewhere. If not, I think I had a video on maybe innumerables when I talked about and I don't know, but basically, we have a function, we can invoke it, we can uh, write invoke or we can call it like this. Um, this is just very different to having an actual function, right? So what we want to do here is we want to take this user view model and we want to create a flat and we want to put trick user and that's it, right? I'm going to leave it at this if you are kind of like confused, like why, why are we doing this? Why are we not doing the thing that we were doing with all the other stuff? Uh, try that. Just try that. See where you end up to, you know, try it different ways. And uh, then tell me in the comments where you ended up. Right. Um, so anyway, uh, this is how we're going to do this thing. When we are grabbing a specific user, we're going to end up with this trick. Let's just go ahead and make sure that when, when we're, uh, grabbing the individual trick, we're actually doing the same thing. So includes, uh, let's just uh, get them, grab all the includes here. I don't think, uh, 
Or actually, yeah, it could be important that we grab the user or we could grab the user off the user ID that's on the record, but I think uh, for, for, for now, this will be fine. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? We're getting the entity when it's an individual entity and we're including the user when it's, uh, what's it called? Um, when we have a list of them. So. Uh, what do we want to do now? What we want to do now is display this information on the trick itself. So uh, let's go ahead over here and, uh, you know, we have some kind of backflip and let me actually hold up what is going on here. Uh, we have some kind of error. And in here, I, I think if I remember correctly, it's actually for, for the purpose of uh, it working in a view model, uh, it's actually important that we say invoke. So we try to refresh there. No, still same thing. What does it say? Object. Actually, wait. Never mind. Object reference. No, so I've uh, read that. I, I thought it was just a problem with the function, but uh, the real problem is well, you know we're not setting a user in anything. So on the seed, uh, where we set something like this, we want to set the user ID as well. So what was it? Not trick user that I'm trying to type. Uh, test user, right? And we're gonna have the test user ID. Let's go ahead, copy this. Put this on here. Put this on here. And do the submissions. We already put the IDs on there. Um, looks good to me. So again, let's go to the bottom. Looks fine. Um, right. Let's take a look at the network and it's server side rendered so we won't be able to see it maybe if we take a look at the view and let's type in trick so on here if we take a look at the trick object we can take a look at the user and presto right we have the image and we have the username right well how do we display the headers well we do it pretty much in the same way we just need the image and the header right so Let's just close everything. Let's go into the web client and uh, let's go into our page uh, where we had our trick, right? So this is what our trick looks like. Uh, let's go ahead and extract it into a component, right? It's a pretty common pattern. You end up with kind of some information all that you're displaying in your website that you the components of which become they essentially become components because you want to display them somewhere else and the primarily the place that i want to display them on is the uh, moderation screen right so view uh, view component uh, trick info card uh, this is going to be a card uh, let's go ahead and cut this put this here big boy moves wrap it in a div put it here Right, and let's, uh, you know, let's fill stuff out. Uh, there is a, There are a couple of things missing. This is actually going to probably become a little bit more or a lot more neater. Uh, we have the trick, we have uh, the difficulty, we have a bunch of states. So the related data, uh, it's uh, to display this array here. So what we're gonna need is we're gonna need to take this computed statement and let's actually just pop it here and let's see what other stuff we're missing. So we're definitely missing this trick. So let's go into props and we're going to put this here and uh, we are, we will need a trick. Uh, required, uh, definitely true, man. We definitely require it. Um, type, what is it? It is an object, right? So we cannot provide, provide a default for that. So we actually need that. Uh, let's see what other things are we missing. Uh, the difficulty. So we are missing the difficulty. How do we actually get the difficulty so you can see here on the fetch what we're doing is we're getting the difficulty from the dictionary and we're getting it like this so uh, this probably doesn't need an assignment this probably could be a computed property so uh let's go ahead and you know stick it on there all right uh, so um below here yeah let's uh let's do this so difficulty and uh, well different tab uh, we are just going to take this, cut it, control tab, put it here, and then return, right? So this dictionary, again, this comes from the map state here. Uh, the submissions, we will uh, 
not need to load them here because this is primarily just the trick information itself. So we didn't actually need the submissions. Uh, let's uh, remove the stuff that we've copied. Uh, I will leave the dictionary because I feel like that we're still using that for something else. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure yet. Uh, the trick itself we're setting and uh, then we're getting a bunch of submissions. Yeah, so the dictionary we're using here to actually extract that specific trick. So the difficulty, let's go ahead and strip away the difficulty. The edit itself with the active actually lives on the trick info card right so i mean that's <laughs> that's pretty much what we want to do all right um let's do it let's grab the method uh and let's put it somewhere here maybe here i think that will be good uh right so one thing that we're missing is this close function it looks like it appear it appears to be open here but if we go in here it's basically an operation on the DOM tree, on the DOM itself. It's a, a browser function. So it's actually going to try to close the tab. We don't want that. We want to pass this close function to it. So on the props, uh, let's go ahead and say we want to be able to close this. Uh, required false. We definitely do not require it. Uh, type uh, this is a function. And the defaults, uh, we already know kind of what the default is that we provide to it, that should, you know, do nothing. So um, this is the function now. And, you know, when we actually go ahead and uh, try to use the trick info card, that's when we want to, you know, bind the trick. So let's go ahead and bind it. And just like that. And the close function, we actually want to bind this close function here as well, right? So we're binding the close function and we're binding the trick. All seems good. Uh, let's see if I forgot anything else. The ID's fucked. <laughs> factories? <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Looks fine. I think I'm more gonna go off. If there are any errors, uh, we will fix those up. So yeah, let's just give this a refresh, see if it works. Console, no errors, right? So nothing's changed. Uh, all that happened is we cleaned up our trick controller to you know, look better. So now uh, the thing that I wanted to do is display a user. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead, put this here. Uh, let's add a user header on here, right? And we're gonna add a couple of things. So uh, the first thing that I added is, or I wanted to add is a username. So that is gonna live on the, um, you know, on the user object here, on the trick. And uh, the other thing that we're adding is an image URL. Yeah, image URL and image URL here. So um, maybe let's give it a refresh and uh, looks like it's broken. Let's see what we're doing here. Uh, maybe I have uh, selected a bad property again let me just quickly take a look at the trick user image right so it's just an image okay uh yep so that's so that's fine right uh, a little bit of terribleness with the you know let's do margin top two because i think we have a a little bit more margin to play with here let's do a little three yeah, I think, uh, what, what is it, My margin one, uh, two, uh, this is hard, okay, this is hard, adjusting this one single line so it's perfect on two sides, it's hard, I, we, we're, I will do, the, we'll do it later, right, so, at the moment, it's a little bit unclear, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit our user header a little bit, to, you know, what is this image? Why, why is this guy here? You know, what the hell? So we want to we wanna handle this. What we're going to do is we're going to add a little div where, where we will say append. We can make this a slot, but for now a t text will do. So let's do append and we will do required fault type string and um, default is empty. Right, and we're only having this if we append something. 
So when we're on here, what we can do is we can say that append and um, edited uh, by and just some text. So we're just appending some text, but very little majority of people is going to look at this and be like uh, something, you know, it looks right. No, we, most of us read from left to right and those who read from right to left uh, read it more succinctly than you bid they de de do right, right that doesn't make sense what we want to do is we want to flip them around so luckily we can do that uh so we let's i can't remember the um, uh exact property but uh reverse or um uh, flex direction right so we're gonna take a flex direction and um, uh, because you can you can display it one way and then the other way and you know, that's the flex the power of flex box so anyway flex reverse that's what we want and we're gonna say class apply flex reverse when do we want to apply it grab another thing put it here say reverse uh, right not required it's a boolean default value false right if reverse apply this class super simple let's go ahead and try to reverse this okay put this there come back here and there it is reversed uh, a little bit of trouble with the margin not a you know not a major problem margin x on left and right there we go so, you know, a little bit reversed, uh, looks a little bit different to this and the image is on a different side. So, you know, you don't have the big image in the, uh, you know, it looks, I think it looks better. If you have other preferences, go for it. You know, like uh, world's your oyster, a uh, tricking library. Anyway, let's get to the juice of the tutorial. What we were going to do is, uh, let me see if we actually have a moderation item here. I think we have just the one, right? So, okay, so we have the backflip. Let's go ahead and edit it. So we're gonna do the same thing. Edit it, da, 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 da. we're gonna do next, save. And obviously uh, you get a bunch of errors because why not? Because you know, you're not authenticated. Uh, standard stuff, that means our code works. Uh, let's go ahead and authenticate. Test password. Uh, there we are. So we're authenticated. Now we can edit. Right. Let's say edited. Forwards roll. Next. Save. Uh, let's see what the error says. I thought that was just the authentication, but it seems like that's not the problem. So uh, let me just quickly take a look at the tricks controller and what was the problem because. It seems like when we're creating or updating, uh, you know, we're actually sending in the the, the whole thing back. So uh, I'm going to say let's separate the two functions, right? So when we get the user and uh, these progressions, let's just uh, separate this out a little bit. So. I'm just going to say, put this here. We're just going to say, pull here, create full and full projection. Okay. Uh, this is public. Not sure how that disappeared there, but full is going to be with the user. The other one is going to be, uh, without the user, but still, uh, with the progressions and, uh, I think, uh, let's just uh, remove all that stuff. I don't think uh, it might be needed, but I don't think so. So for the create, that's uh, the thing that's going to be happening, right? For these projections, let's go ahead and say that we want, sorry, that's the submissions. I'm just editing the wrong thing. For the actual individual trick, let's get the full projection. And uh, for the list of tricks, let's get the full projection as well. 
I know it may seem a little bit unintuitive, but we'll actually need this in a second, right? So uh, I'm still on this form. Let's go ahead, save. I'm still getting the error or what is this? Uh, user marked as not active. Okay, well, we need to sign in again. Uh, you know, stuff happens all, all the time. That's why initially you don't really want to develop your application with a user because, you know, you run into this problem where you need to re-sign in and re-sign in as becomes a bother, right? And then you have to set up your environment for development to be a little bit easier here because that initial like one hour setup is going to save you such so, so just to be able to be constantly signed in is going to save you like 10 hours in the future, right? So anyway, uh, we're here. Let's grab our backflip, uh, forwards roll, edited, next, save. We save it. Uh, let's go into moderation number four and here it is right so instead of this we actually want to display you know <laughs> valid tricks so <clears throat> uh, let's uh, let me close everything uh, let's go into the mod id and uh, instead of this uh, let's go ahead and get a row out so we'll say v row and we'll say v column as well because we're going to have a couple of things here, right? And we'll do another one. And then here, uh, we're going to do something interesting. We're going to do V icon. And I think uh, MDI arrow right, maybe. Is that going to give me an arrow? Yeah. That's it. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, hopefully you can see where I'm going with this, right? So 46, maybe. Is that good enough? Big enough? Uh, yeah, that looks good. So... Right here in this column, actually, that's where I want it to be, right? So right there with the comment section as a row, I want it to be next to this thing. I don't want it to be bobbing about there, above there. So you have to scroll down to, you know, to review. Uh, I'm copying VS, uh, what's it called? Azure pipelines here, if you're not sure. Uh, this thing, the arrow is only here if we have the current, right? So this stuff, let's put it here. Um, this stuff is V if we only have uh, the target or is it item? It is item. So let's actually rename it. So rename to target. Uh, let's refactor. And here we're going to get in a, a menu pop up, a bunch of usages. Um, these are that are included. We can exclude them if it's ident identified them as being incorrect. I think they're all correct. Let's go ahead and rename and all the items should be renamed to targets here. So what do we put in the columns, right? The age all question. Well, we got a component. So we don't need you know, to worry too much about it. What do we got? Uh, what do we need to put in here? Trick, uh, what do we actually put in here? Target, right? Don't forget that we're actually getting the target and the current through this endpoint. So API, trick, and whatever. So just, uh, just a reminder of what, what why we actually fixed up the, uh, what's it called? The, the individual uh, trick endpoint with all of this stuff, right? Uh, let's put this stuff on here as well. All right, uh, and what other parameter did we have? Uh, close, right? So there is nothing to close on here. Empty function. And I think we actually have a default for it, so we don't need to. Cool. So let, let's see what we end up with, right? Let's give this a refresh. A bunch of errors. That's okay. Let's see the console. Expected object got null. So let's see why we got null. Trick target, target current. So we're actually meant to be passing current here. Yeah, so because there is no VF target on here, uh, it would try to render and put the target in there. So we were we are meant to be checking for the current here and passing the current right so cool let's refresh there we go let's go ahead and check out how can we help it so uh, taking a look at this specific thing going uh, one up into the column here so um display flex and uh, i mean almost Justify content center. Isn't that 
everything you ever want wanted kind of thing, you know? That's uh that's it. That's there. Uh so <clears throat> let's put the class uh display flex justify center. You may have noticed something here. Okay. Uh, this doesn't have the prerequisites in the target. And uh, there is a good reason for this. So if we go, go back into the tricks controller and we go into the full projection, we're only getting uh, the active ones. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a vote that when we get the full projection, uh, let's actually, you know, remove the active constraint. Okay, so we are going to get the full projection, the full projection. Uh, let me actually put back the active ones so I can actually copy them properly, put them here. When we go for the lower one, that's when we, you know, that's when we want to grab those. Um, yeah, on here, uh, the active ones, let's remove them. We're just going to get all the versions. And uh, once we come to the point where... Um, other it's another thing that we'll need to fix basically because at the moment we have only one editing so kind of this is the old version this is the new version and uh, the new version only has the relationships that are fresh the older version might have other tricks with other relationships so it might be a flag that we need to control so we can uh, supply a different version but it's pretty much uh, yeah, this is this this is where we are. So for the full projection, uh, we're not going to be getting that. The active ones. Uh, oh. uh, let's grab the scrape full. We're gonna put this near the full projection. Uh, so for here, just to kind of uh, restate, we get the active with the user, and um, think uh, that could be. A problematic for when we return so uh, let's go actually put this here and uh, I will think about how maybe we can use this uh, make this a little bit cleaner but for now let's go ahead and um, use a, a user proje projection here and we're gonna be using active with the user this one's just gonna be full projection right so regular projection active uh, user projection that's gonna be active with user and full projection is going to be all relationships with uh, uh, just the user. And yeah, again, uh, just bear with uh, us having multiples of these things. Uh, we, um, I mean, I'm gonna think of a way to maybe, not maybe, we will clean this up. So in the tricks controller, let's go ahead and delegate all this stuff. When we grab all the stuff, we wanna just get the user. Uh, full projection that's when we want to get all of this stuff and uh, all the other stuff is using the other projection which is completely fine so uh, now hopefully this is the last time that we're going to need to edit this because it's becoming painful to edit and uh, come back so on the back flip we still get the user let's go ahead edit uh, let's go ahead add a relationship here and we're going to add a bunch of stuff save uh, obviously Kind of log in. Haven't clearly haven't learned my lesson. So let's go ahead again. Forwards roll. A cup uh, and edit. Let's go ahead. Do this. Save. Awesome. Right. Moderation. Number four. And there we go. Right. So here we get all the goodness displayed, the previous version, the next version, we don't need to say next, current, whatever. If we go to the previous one and we just go for the three, you can see here, um, we just get the individual one that we are testing. If you want, uh, we can make this a little bit smaller. So calls, let's say, does it really matter? What if we just say three on here, right? It's gonna look, Maybe something like that. Maybe because we want, we always want these to be kind of may, maybe centered. And what is this uh, centered or what was it? Justify. Oh, okay. And then you specify. And then uh, I guess uh, center, that's how it was. So we, okay. So if we have the individual card, we center it. If we go into. 
uh, just like a moderation, right? We have these ones in there, you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, the other thing that we might want to take care of is different sizes. But again, it's like uh, kind of, uh, you know, when do where do we want to end up with this whole thing? So if we maybe set this to eight and four, right? Spread it out a little bit. Um, that's what it's going to look like. But yeah, uh, basically the thing that I wanted to achieve with having the users displayed. So maybe uh, later on, again, the minor thing that we could change is uh, if it's version one. We just say that it's created by, edited by, and then if you can view history, uh, you can scroll through the history of the trick and see who edited, who added what, and whatnot, right? Uh, and yeah, again, just having the trick information here, just you know, displaying the user. Who, 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 you, if you are a user, uh, imagine uh, creating, I don't know, a null pointer. You know, you you want your face on that, right? Or may or do you? You know, uh, whatever. Anyway. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section. Like, subscribe. If you already haven't, if you, uh, you know, this is going to be the last of these series. And if you actually watch these endings, you want to subscribe. I got some some real stuff coming after these series because, you know, as, as it always goes, it's going to be a bit of a rant. As it always goes with these series, you know, everybody starts like, yeah, motivated, and then it just goes, so it's not good for the channel. But hopefully, if you are sticking to these series, you are learning a lot, and uh, yeah, uh, hopefully you are enjoying these. And thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, join my Discord server. Ask questions there if you need to. I stream on Wednesdays and Sundays. You can join that. And uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe. R real stuff is coming after we are done with these series and yeah, I'll see you in the next episode.